Hi everybody, welcome to another skills and drills segment. Today's session has to do with our green side chip shot. Green side chip and run shot. Uh, green side bump and run shot. A couple different terms we use for this shot. Uh, typically this strategy will come into play when we're dealing with a flat surface around the green. In other words, there's no need to elevate the ball in the air, so we don't need a lofted uh, pitch lob shot. In other words, we don't have to hit it over a bunker or a hazard, uh, anything like that. So we've got a pretty flat surface uh, in front of the green. Uh, this, this strategy can also uh, move further away from the green as well, especially here in Florida where you've got a lot of flat surface before the green itself. So we're going to talk about the techniques and uh, some of the uh, faults and fixes uh, that we see every day when we teach this shot. Okay, All right, let's start with some fundamentals. Uh, first, uh, the loft of the shot has to be determined. Uh, we want a low lofted shot. We want the ball to land and then have a good amount of roll. Okay, The percentage of in the air uh, corresponding loft versus roll has to be determined based on where your target is. Okay, So in this case I've chosen a, a 9 iron uh, and if I look at uh, the options for club choices you can go anywhere from 7, 8, 9, even a pitching wedge if you have a means of controlling the trajectory so it doesn't get too high. Okay, So let's talk about the setup first. Uh, you know this shot has to do with uh, our poor chippers are generally people who are not making good impact, uh, poor contact, miss hits. So good contact is our our first step in uh, getting our skill level uh, raised a little bit. So good contact. The next step generally then when you get a reliable impact based on the improving your skill is coming up with the distance control. So that, that comes through practice. Okay, so good impact, good contact, and ultimately good distance control is a must here too. So what I'm going to do here is give you a, a sense of a, a good fundamental setup for the uh, bump and run, chip and run shot. And again I'm using a 9 iron here. Uh, but one of the, the big fundamentals of the setup here has to do with uh, non-traditional to the normal setup would be we are going to actually lower that front shoulder to make the shoulders level and at the same time move about 10 percent of our weight over to our front leg. Okay, So what you'll see I just did was I just took some loft off of this 9 iron. You see the shaft leaning forward. So this is going to have a uh, what looks like more of an 8 iron, 7 iron type loft when the ball's up in the air. Okay, So again we're looking at a low trajectory shot here with a lot of roll. So the benefit of this setup, uh, we're going to start with a middle ball position by the way. Uh, middle ball position start, uh, forward left leg, forward forward leg, right left leg if you're a right handed player. This will level out the shoulders, okay? So that's a very important fundamental to get us into a good backswing. So a, a good backswing uh, requires a little bit of elevation. We want to make sure that we have a a vertical takeaway so we have a vertical approach into the ball. Most of the poor chippers we see have a poor impact of course and generally that means the club's coming in from too shallow of an approach into the ball. Shallow meaning low and parallel to the ground. So that brings the ground into play. So we see a lot of uh, hitting it fat and if it's uh, if we're hitting it thin that is generally similar fault where the low point of the arc, low point of the swing is behind the ball and then they'll swing up into the ball to hit it thin. So fat and thin can actually be uh, similar faults. Okay. So on our backswing we want to try to feel that club elevate more. Uh, we're gonna, this is all kind of the bad zone here. Uh, keep the club elevated away from that zone as much as we can on the takeaway. If you notice my weight doesn't move uh, whatsoever and my approach then is coming down equally steep so we got a steep back and down and the next area of concern typically with a poor chipper is the hand and wrist motion so what we're going to have to 
uh, understand here that as we we've got to keep the, the wrist and hand motion to a minimum we're just going to try to get this swinging more like a pendulum almost like a putting stroke that has more verticality to it and if you'll see if I'm hitting as I'm hitting the ground you'll see my impact spot is actually in front of the ball okay so we go back to the divot in front of the ball scenario okay all right one thing that's kind of a handy little item here to get you working on your wrist joints is put a ruler in your wrist in your wrist watch here that's going to keep that lead front left wrist firm so we don't want we don't want that to have an angle to it okay that's bad both back and through okay so firm wrist angle in the hitting area and a firm wrist angle at the completion so the stroke has verticality to it back down and through and you'll see no wrist joint movement here like that and pretty quiet on the way back too okay so we got up back to the ball back onto the ball impact no wrist motion follow through vertical up down through that's the easiest thinking I believe for for your chip and run keep that club vertical keep the wrist joints quiet swing the club more like a pendulum semi like you're putting we're going to always have a good impact with the bottom of the club hitting the ground the club face hitting the back of the ball at the same time okay probably the second most important shot in golf in my opinion putting being number one but we're faced with a lot of these shots uh, next to the green when we play golf every day so get to work on it next session we're going to pitch lob the ball up in the air we'll see you then